In today's video, I'm going to try and make an end grain chopping board for under £10. Thanks for clicking play and welcome to my bomb shelter basement workshop. In my last video, I made a chopping board out of scrap wood. It turned out pretty decent, but I struggled all the way through it and I probably triggered some professional woodworkers in the process. So I wanted to have a go at making one properly. To do that, I'm going to have to do something I really don't like doing. I'm going to go buy some wood. Now that I have my wood, here is the plan. I'm going to try and make a very nice version out of this wood to start with. And then once I've perfected my method, I'm going to attempt to make an end grain chopping board for under £10. So let's start by chopping this stuff up. This first one's going to be made from pre-cut timber. The big pieces are 50 millimeters square, the small pieces are 25 millimeters square, so they should all fit together perfectly. First we need to get chopping on my dodgy zero clearance jig. Almost all the edges were still pretty rough because my zero clearance jig was rubbish, so I put them all through the sander again and tidied them all up. After I had made them all nice and smooth, it was time for an experiment. The first tests were looking pretty good, so I decided to grab a bigger pot and get as many of these little blocks stained up as possible. Some of them looked like they turned out better than others depending on how long they were submerged and at the end I dried them all out on top of my radiator. I really don't know how well these are going to work, but now my experiment's over with, it's time to assemble them into a pretty little pattern. Unfortunately, I miscalculated, so I had to stain up some more blocks. Whilst those last pieces are sucking ink and drying out, I'm going to do a dry test run of sticking this thing together because I've learned from my mistakes. It's a really good job I did a test run before adding glue because most of these pieces are loose. These side pieces are just falling out with no effort and it's still got full force on the clamps. This annoyed me and I gave up for the day. But when I came back the next day, they weren't as loose. When I inked this original batch, I left it on the radiator to dry out and I think they shrank. I left the new batch for 24 hours and when I put the new batch of inked pieces in, they are perfectly tight, exactly how I was expecting it to go. So to fix this, I decided to take out all the loose wobbly pieces, leave them in ink for 24 hours, let them fatten up and stick them back in. Everything now fits snugly. Here comes the tricky bit, gluing it up. There's loads of pieces, multiple sides. Let's see how this goes. Normally to get something like this flat, I would use my router. It's nice, quick and easy. But in the last video, I found that my router jig isn't that great. The aluminium I've used to make it is too thin and it just flexes all over the place. So I decided to head to the local hardware place and make myself a new router jig. After flattening this with a router and a sander, 
you can see a few of my stained blocks have started to lose their colour. Which is a bit annoying, but a lot of them are still dark, so I know that it works and I know how to improve it in the future. Next comes treating it and making it look pretty, but before that we're going to do another experiment. I'm going to experiment with the back of the board, dropping tiny bits of wood stain on there and see how it looks. It's not too bad, but it's definitely not as sharp as the other side where I pre-stained them. But I do think it's good enough to just darken the blocks on the top. This board is going to get a coat of food safe epoxy. I'm going to test it out on the backside first and if it looks good enough then we'll flip it over and do it again. Now that it's nice and flat we're going to sort out the edges. I'm just going to put a basic angle on this one because the curve one went a bit wrong last time. I might not even do a handle, let's see. I'm going to use this plunge bit to add a handle properly to this one because I want to sell it so it has to look nice. Now that that one's finished, like usual, I'll do some really fancy arty shots at the end to show you how it turned out. But now we're going to move on to making the end grain chopping board for under £10. When I was buying my wood, I picked up these basic pieces of construction timber. These are 2.4 metres long and they are 60 three millimeters by 38 millimeters. I bought two of these pieces and they were three pounds 47 each. So that's actually under seven pounds for the wood. But because it's construction timber, it has slightly rounded edges. So I do want to get them nice and square. So I'm gonna start by cutting these into eight equal length pieces. And then we're gonna run them through the table saw to straighten them up. Now we have our eight pieces of equal length wood. We're just gonna stick them together. Like all my tools, my circular saw is cheap, which means it's small, which means it couldn't cut all the way through this piece of wood. So for the first couple of pieces, I finished them off by hand, but this was boring. So for the remaining pieces, I just flipped over the piece of wood thinking that was a good idea. In hindsight, trying to cut these with a small circular saw was a terrible idea. So now I have to clean all these up and try flatten them off if I can. That's gonna be boring. I'm not gonna put that in the video. But if you can cut a straight line properly, your wood should turn out looking something like this. If you can cut a straight line, just stick all these together and you're pretty much finished. Unfortunately, I didn't have that luxury as most of my pieces were ruined, so I had to change the design. Instead of having straight lines going all the way across, I decided to move every other piece so that it made the pattern a little different. Obviously this wasn't big enough, so we got the remaining four pieces, glued them into two sections, and these became the end pieces of our chopping board to make it nice and symmetrical.
After flattening the first side with the router, it was absolutely horrible. But I decided to push on and try the other side, and that was just as bad. I don't know if it was the wood I was using or my rubbish old router bit, but I didn't want to give up, so I decided to sand the crap out of it and see how it looked. After a lot of sanding, it started to look good, so it was time to give it a bit of style. We started with the edges, using the same slanty router bit we did on the last board. Next, we filled in any gaps with some glue and sawdust, then sprayed the board with water to pop the grain and make sure it was completely flat. And we even gave it these bottom position handles just to finish it off properly. This one's not getting a coat of epoxy because it's supposed to be an end grain chopping board for under £10 and that would have added to the price. Instead, I'm using cutting board oil with wet and dry sandpaper and sanding it up to about 16,000 to see what happens. The chopping boards are done. As usual, it took longer than expected, but that's because I learn as I go along. Chopping board number one, I absolutely love this piece. The staining test worked. As long as you don't take too much material away from the top, it looks really cool. When you are staining them, let them dry naturally over a day or two so the wood stays the same size. Using pre-cut timber really helped when it came to putting the whole thing together, but trying to glue up that many pieces all in one go was a bit of a pain. The food safe epoxy left this thing beautifully smooth. If I was doing any more chopping boards, that is definitely what I would use. But one thing I did wrong is I should have filled the gaps with epoxy before I give it a final coat as there is just a few tiny little bits on this where there's space. Handles worked out really well this time. Everything stayed in one piece. It looks really nice all the way around. I love this one. I'm tempted to keep it, but I'll probably just sell it on my Etsy store. The end grain chopping board for £10 turned out brilliant. Not as good as the other one, but the material was cheaper. Obviously we have quite a random pattern because I ruined the cutting early on, but sticking all the beams together at the start makes this version a lot simpler to glue up and put together. I like these lower section handles. I only did these because I didn't have enough material to put them in the center, but they turned out really good. There is a few gaps here and there where I've had trouble sticking it together. I was doing this in a rush. The top is silky smooth, but it is no way near the epoxy version. It did take me a long time to get it sanded to a really flat surface before I could finish it, so I didn't bother doing the back properly. I think some of the colouring from the wet and dry sandpaper came off onto the board. It was definitely a lot brighter before I started the sanding process. But apart from that, this is an end grain chopping board for only £7. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. But there was one more problem. Both of these boards bowed. By the time I'd finished them, I'd left them for a few days, and I came back to them and they were both rocking. I had a look on the internet and it's probably down to the way I put them together, but the fix is super easy. I just flipped it over and left it on a flat surface for about a week and it went straight again. So if you have a bowed chopping board, or if you buy this one and it bows, turn it over and put it on a flat surface. It sorts it out. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Um, this is my next video and it's nearly finished, so that should be coming out soon, hopefully. As usual, if you've got any tips, questions or suggestions, sit them in the comments below. I do try to reply to every single one of them. And it would be cool if you could subscribe. It's a little button, it clicks, takes like half a second. Apart from that, thanks very much for watching. I already said that. I'll see you in the next video.